brilliant oriental culture has been blooming for several thousand years. Dwelling on a land blessed with breathtaking scenery, clear water, beautiful weather and fertile paddies, over the centuries the Korean people have gained traits of worshipping their ancestors, upholding decorum and seeking peace. For centuries, the peace-loving people have enjoyed songs and dances and have created the world-famous Choreo Celadons. Though Korea has never invaded other countries, the neighbouring nations have time and again made attempts to dominate and conquer Korea, a country of tremendous strategic importance. Whenever a foreign people invaded, Koreans exercised their collective strength to block and repel the invader. In the 7th century, the people, under the command of General Olchimondok, annihilated an invading one million army horde from the Swede dynasty in China. And the monk soldiers and troops won a victory over an invading Japanese fleet in the 16th century. One reason the Koreans could defend their land was that they had long practiced traditional martial arts. Murals in ancient tumuli and sculptures dating back to about 15 or 16 centuries ago attest to this fact. This book, the Illustrated Martial Arts Textbook, systematically introduces the centuries-old Korean martial arts. It was published in 1790 during the Yi dynasty. From the book, we learn that Korean martial arts were divided into two main categories, those for men of the sword and those for men of letters. One example of the former is fencing. Korean swordsmen observed three courtesies, allegiance to the king, filial piety to masters and parents, and fidelity among themselves. In fact, these three courtesies formed the backbone of the spirit of martial arts for the men of the sword. Korean ancestors had thus placed the ultimate goal of martial arts not on the taking of life, but on the development of the spirit. <laughs> Korean fencing is divided into four categories in accordance with the kinds of swords and their use. The method of brandishing two long swords, holding them upright, was popular during the more recent Yi dynasty. It is said to have been practiced mainly by the palace guards. This method of using two short swords or knives was the favorite of court ladies serving the king. This fencing method is still evident in the form of a folk dance, the sword dance. During the days of the Silla Kingdom, which lasted from the 1st century BC to the 10th century AD, many parents let their sons tour around famous mountains and rivers in order to learn about nature and to discipline themselves. Many became Hwarang, or young warriors, who helped unify the three kingdoms on the peninsula. This reverse type fencing was perfected by Hwarang. 
The straight type fencing is the oldest type of fencing in Korea, about 1,400 years old. It is indeed a splendid feat, almost a dance, a true art. of letters who studied Confucianism and members of the royal family also learned and practiced martial arts, but in a very different way from the men of the sword. What characterizes the arts for the men of letters is in the use of bare hands, which are equally effective as tools or weapons. Martial arts of this category, which comprise some 3,600 different kinds, have been developed as a self-defense art. Let's look into some of them. This is joint twisting, in which the defender twists swiftly a joint of the challenger and presses down a vital part. Since the arts of this category take advantage of the weaknesses of muscles and joints, the defender is able to overcome the challenger with less strength. This is a conversion technique, in which the defender by rotating his body momentarily, drives his opponent to lose balance and fall. The apprehension technique, which binds and sends a wild rogue to a perfect fix with the aid of a piece of rope, was a martial art police officers had to practice in the old days. is an art of suppressing two assailants without hurting them and escorting them away. In the olden times, a fan carried by a nobleman often played a role as a weapon of defense. The technique is said to be about 10 centuries old. The cane technique, developed in the 7th century by monk Wan Hyo, aims to apply a blow or hook and pull vital spots or weak joints of the body. The surprising effectiveness of a slender piece of stick stems from a serious systematic study of the human body. Another vein of Korean martial arts has been handed down through Buddhist monks. Whenever the destiny of the country was at stake, monks organized army units and fought against invading forces. The heroic episodes of monks Seo San and Sa Myung Dang, who fought against the Japanese in the 16th century, are but part of many examples. The Buddhist martial arts of Korea have a close relationship with sitting meditation. Because they must sit on the floor for a long time, 
monks did some physical exercises both before and after meditating. Such exercises are said to have become the basis for the Buddhist martial arts. Let us view the club technique, a favourite of monks in ancient Korea. The clubs used are divided into short, intermediate and long clubs. We are looking at a kind of intermediate club dance, a series of attack and defence stances connected together. Old Korean paintings often took up Taoists carrying long sticks as a theme. The paintings could well be regarded as historic evidence which implies the use of long club techniques. A demonstration on the use of a short club which twists and turns, pierces and hits vital spots on the human body. Sagacious masters of yesterday could defend themselves by the use of a short club of only some 20 centimetres in length. Korean Buddhism has an age-old tradition of defending the country. Whenever the country lay in the midst of turmoil, Buddhists rose following the teachings of Buddha, mercy on all living beings, and defending the country to save the distressed masses. The history of Korea's Buddhist struggle is a reflection of warm brotherhood and the spirit of territorial defence. Traditional martial arts of Korea, now national games or sports, 